We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage, bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have and not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord God said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you and I will make a great nation but Moses implored the Lord his God and said O Lord why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand why should the Egyptians say it was the evil intent that he brought them out of to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly our psalm. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sin with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A reading from First Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he helped me. He judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed with me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full, full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the utmost. But for that very reason I received mercy. So that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ, might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. The King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. The Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost till he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have you ever reached a moment asking yourself the question, I wonder how so-and-so is doing? Now and then I get to that point regarding my friends and colleagues in the ministry. Within the past couple of weeks, I have been in contact with old friends, mainly because I was wondering how they were doing. It's not the understanding that they were lost and living their lives aimlessly, but when I have not seen someone or talked to someone who was once a vital part of my, of my life, I, I get curious. It's almost like the way they were lost and at least lost in your mind. So I reached out to a friend a couple of weeks ago and chatted for a bit. And then she said, God was working here because I was typing to reach out to you too going to a hospital so they can remove a brain tumor. They said things would go well, but I'm scared. Sometimes you feel that a part of your life is missing and you yearn for that part to be revitalized. Then you make a phone call, text message, or email to a person who has been a part of your past. We know it can be tough to keep in contact with people who used to be a vital part of our everyday lives. We care about them and want to know how they are doing. But what about the people who do not like or the people who live our lives that they don't exist or we don't think of them, they don't matter? We constantly hear in church a call to reach out to all people. Not just people we know, but strangers. The gospel challenges us to look at the quest to seek the loss of the stranger and the friend. So all can see the glory that we know in Christ Jesus. Reaching out to the lost is our quest and goal as people of faith. We can ask ourselves, I wonder how so and so is doing. Reaching out to the lost in this world and society is a challenge. But it should not be challenging for our friends and loved ones. There are some congregations whose purpose is to reach out to people in the community with no intention of inviting them to worship. Some do not heed the call to reach out to the stranger and friend so that they, too, may know the power to come and hear the word of God and partake in God's sacraments. The goal is about the people who have become separated from the body of Christ. They are lost, but are not gone. Our challenge as people of faith is to reach out to others who may have been disenchanted. They may be at a point where they are deconstructing their lives and faith and need an objective ear and open hand. 
Some may have lost their faith in focusing on God's will, worshiping God, and having God as a priority in their lives. There are a lot of people who feel lost out there in the world. We may know some of them. And there is a priority in searching for the lost among us. We are challenged not to be complacent in our mission to spread the gospel. It is a quest that involves all of us. During this time, members have approached me for the past couple of years, asking me, or Sister Megan, how is a member that they have not seen in a while? Sometimes I have been bold to ask the question right back at them. Have you contacted them? Studies have shown that people get disenchanted, lost, and leave communities of faith, not because of the staff's lack of contact, but because of a fellow lay member not reaching out to them. It is a call for all disciples of Christ to seek the lost. When we read the gospel as evidence, especially after hearing it in prior weeks, that there were people out there to get Jesus. People were unhappy that God's Son had come with a message of love, and they wanted Jesus to bring out fear, separation, and judgment. The point that Jesus gives is beyond the realm of tradition and rules. As Jesus moved about the country, preaching and teaching God's word, people were waiting to hear his words to trap and invalidate his authority in proclaiming the gospel. So today, we hear from other church leaders that Jesus welcomed sinners and ate with them. One can imagine that that had been getting on Jesus' last nerves. But instead of showing frustration, Jesus spoke of a parable. It is a parable about the extravagant behavior of a shepherd who has lost a sheep. This parable is strange in and of itself because who in their right minds would behave like this shepherd. Most likely, if a shepherd realized that they had lost a sheep, there would not be much concern. Probably giving the notion, well, you win some, you lose some. Maybe a wolf snuck by and got him. The shepherd searched high and low places to look for the sheep. And to be so delighted by finding the sheep is out of the ordinary. Maybe this is why Jesus tells the parable of the lost coin, too. Because people may understand the relationship between being frugal financially and being frugal in the same way and reaching out and proclaiming the gospel to the entire world. The friend I mentioned earlier has, has been friends for decades. We met as counselors at a summer camp. The last day at summer camp weekly was challenging for many campers. And many had such good experiences that they did not want to leave. One year we were put to the test as one camper refused to go home. Especially when they saw who was picking them up. The youth ran away and hid. It took us a while to find the camper. When we found the child, she told us about the family abuse. We had to decide what to do. We knew that if we allowed her to return, she might be forever lost. This situation was the challenge. We, as people of faith, take seriously the notion of reaching out to people we have not seen in a while. Something might be wrong as to why they are hiding. They may be afraid. They need to know that God is there and we are there to help them see the glory of God. See, being lost, either spiritually, physically, out in the world world, being lost is not fun. And people don't decide to just be lost. When people decide to go away, that's one thing. But being lost is another. And being lost is not fun. This understanding is our challenge as people of faith to see the validity of God's saving grace not only to us but also to the welfare of others. 
Do we have friends who need to know that God loves them? Especially when they're lost, afraid, and scared. That we love them? Maybe we need to make that phone call today. Or maybe we need to just send a text message. Or send an email. Oh, and my friend I reached out to, her surgery went well. And she told me that she had a long recovery. I responded that sister and I would be with her as we all walked the road to God's everlasting care. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your blessed saints have now di have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.